What's up, guys? Welcome back uh, to another episode. Um, so first off, I want to thank everybody who has been joining the cause, have had a ton of likes and a ton of subscriptions. Um, only a couple videos in, so it's very, very awesome news. And I can't thank you guys enough. It definitely, like I have said in the previous videos, motivates me to make more content. And I'm happy that, you know, I'm definitely providing something um, to where people are wanting to stay tuned in for my future videos. So um, I try to make these videos every Wednesday. Um, so stay tuned for new watchers. However, um, I haven't gotten into a whole lot of safety stuff just yet. And I have a lot more content before I do get into anything regarding safety. So I kind of want to just give a, um, you know, overview of a lot of the weapons that I have. As far as like safety and tips, this is falling more on the tips side of the purpose of the channel. So, you know, in the last one I talked about, you know, pretty much a gun that would be fantastic for um, home defense with the X5 Legion, um, as well as competition. Now this is going to be, um, if I only had the means for one particular firearm, it would be um, a Glock 19, especially for a newbie. Um, I think this is perfect. I think that um, with all the um, aftermarket parts, you can definitely make it your own. And as long as you're very careful with um, the things that you're putting into your gun, you can still keep your reliability and um you know just the insane amount of difference um as far as you know if you go and get like i don't know an hk or cz there's only a couple things you can do to make really make the gun different per se but also in terms of customization towards your liking this has been my favorite 19 that i've ever done this is the glock 19x you know this is not what you're going to get out of the box of course so just to kind of go through the gun i have trijicon um xdr sights i believe they're orange front i really like these i think these are the best um because they're one they're night sights so they're really easy especially at night like if it, um guns on your bed stand you can really locate your firearm really easy um, aside from that they're very durable um they're pretty hard to get on and uh equally as hard to come off which is something that i prefer i think the best sight picture you will get on a glock is actually the terran tactical um, fiber optic set sights that they have for their combat master however it is held in by a allen head like a, a headless screw and i don't know longevity how well that would be so that is something that i do not recommend i know a lot of combat masters have them i'm sure they're fine i would think but i don't know i had one and it literally slid on and off the back i wasn't a huge fan of it personally um especially if you don't tighten that screw or you over tighten it or something weird happens um, for that screw not to grab thread anymore. I mean, you're virtually going to have a sight that's flying off, but especially your rear sight, which would suck. So the front sight on a Glock is always screwed in from the bottom. So, I mean, that, that's regular on the Terran Tactical sights. However, these are just dovetail push on sights and they're very, very tight. I've installed three of these now for my Glocks and I absolutely love them. Um, all of them fit exactly the same. They're very high quality. They're from Trijicon. So um, just like their RMRs and SROs and everything, I, I cannot say enough how impressed I am with the quality of um, sights that they have. They're also full steel and they have a um, full flat finish there. And so basically um, it works great. You can rack off your boot, your pants, um, you know, virtually anything. Um, it'll catch so dresser door handle frame anything that you you know granite um, they say that self-defense scenario um, you know you typically get there's there's a very hit, high chance you're gonna hit one of your extremities um, aka hands or legs um, so if you have to do some one-handed uh, um, manipulation of the slide that is obviously something that um, you know is very important uh, along on the 19x along with the other things I've done an extended slide stop um, so this hasn't caused any malfunctions whatsoever for me um, and you typically don't that's not really anything that has anything to do with the fire mechanism if your grip's not strong enough I have no notice with some weaker um, shooters that have shot my gun and every once in a while I get it too um, it will affect the lockback it's a little bit um, I think it's it, it needs to travel just a tiny bit more than the stock one or the one that comes in the gun the OEM one um, so that can cause it if you're not holding it hard enough um, when the when you're firing that could cause it not to go all the way back and get you locked back on the magazine not really a malfunction as opposed to um, that could happen with you know limp wristing anything as well as a failure to extract if you're uh, limp wristing 
I went with a TLR 7A um, uh, light, one for the Candela, two because it matches, so I really like that. Um, I think that worked out really well. Another thing that I like about Glocks is you can do um, a polished uh, trigger job. That's something to where if you do not know how to, to do polishing on, on any sort of metal work, you can take that to any gunsmith at your local shop. It's a fairly easy fix, um, and it really does help out. So, again, we are clear. But just to show you, this has been my favorite trigger I have ever done. Um, and as you see, I'll do it right here in the light, and I'm, I don't even have any back pressure here, really, other than on the slide. But um, as you can see it breaks immediately like there's no wall which i personally like so that helps me with my um you know whenever you're shooting quickly just not having that you can really lock the front side in on whatever you're trying to do and pull it really fast and you'll still get a really clean break which is something that i really like it helps for accuracy reasons especially on follow-up shots so that is my preferred method that's why um, this actually has all the um, stock trigger components. The only thing that I have done is a really nice um, polish job. I've done that myself. However, due to um, YouTube's restrictions, I won't be performing anything or showing anyone how to do that. And um, also that is something that you should know how to do. I don't recommend trying to learn it on YouTube. Again, that is a pretty simple thing to do. So, I mean, taking it into a gunsmith or trying to learn um, to do it, I would recommend you buy a set of backup parts just to make sure and always test your firearms. So interestingly enough on this gun, I had an apex trigger system um, uh, connector when I first got it and it actually caused the gun not to the striker spring was not, I really don't know what was happening. It felt like the striker spring wasn't completely releasing. So the trigger connector um, was influencing that in some way, which I've never seen before. And I've used that same trigger setup in many other Glocks. However, for this specific gun, it will not work. So I ended up doing a polish job and that actually ended up, you know, a little bit nicer, but you should always test all your firearms, no matter what happens. Even if you haven't done any changes to it, you should always text test your firearms I have had guns out of the box that just simply have not worked. So um, that is always a recommendation that um, I think that everyone should try. doesn't matter what kind of gun you have, what brand it is. You always test it out. Make sure there's nothing funny going on with the gun. These are mass production uh, guns, so they're more likely to have a hiccup along the way. doesn't mean that it's a bad gun. This gun itself, um, you know, when the gun was brand new, I put the Apex stuff in there. Doing a couple dry fires, I noticed it was acting funny. Had some issues. Changed it out ever since. Um, and I only fired about a magazine through it um, with the Apex trigger connector and that trigger system. And Apex, don't get me wrong, Apex is an awesome, awesome trigger um, system assembly. I actually use Apex in all of my guns because of the continued reliability. However, in this specific gun, it did not work. And I'm not sure if it's something to do with the 19X. However, I couldn't figure it out after multiple measurements and, and tinkering. I could not figure it out. So I reverted it all back to normal just to ensure that I had... Um, complete reliability and this gun is right around 1250 rounds through not a single issue um, ever since I went back to the original stuff as you can see there's some modifications to the frame as well so this is another um, frame that I had done by SRB customs and as you can see um, I had them do accelerator cuts a single undercut um, uh, trigger guard um, this is their stitches pattern and I had them do it custom fit to the magwell and as you can see it ended up extremely nice so, uh, and they did it all the way around the back. I mean, I just really love how this worked out. I did a low tang in the back. Um, it also does a pretty awesome lip cut, um, as you can see in there. Um, he did not go too far on the front, and I wanted it that way just for, since we're already cutting some polymer off, I just wanted to make sure we weren't losing any of the actual um structure to the firearm that was something that scared me a little bit you can always take off a little bit but as you really start to take off a lot um, especially like down here this is actually right here is reinforced this up here is not so this uh right here this bend here i don't know how they do it but you can shave this down as far as you want to go and you won't have any flex there which is really impressive however up here as you thin this out you will get a ton of flex i don't know why it's that way but it stops right around there and just there to like, you know, from there to like right up there, there's just a lot of flex there. If you shave it down, it will become flimsy. 
and um, just something I don't recommend. So they reinforce. There's there's some definitely some some concentrated points in this. Um, that's why you just leave it to the professionals. Um, you know, SRB, he does a ton of these every single day. I've had him do tons of my um, frames. Never had one issue whatsoever. They're all fantastic, and he does really quality work. So um, purpose of this gun, I kind of got, you know, a little bit too sidetracked running off on all the, um, you know, modifications. However, I do. Uh, this is definitely my favorite. Um, so really, all in all, in this gun, you know, with the polish job, even if you were to pay, I mean, I don't think that uh, armor would charge you more than like a hundred bucks for that um so they're not trying to take advantage of you i think that was like 15 dollars for this or 20 bucks or something something very minuscule the gun itself i think it's msrp is right around 600 bucks if i'm not mistaken i don't even recall what i paid for but just to give you an idea um, it comes with the extended uh, mag release which i really like um so let's just start adding this up so let's say uh, the light, I believe, was like 130, um, and then the sights were 130, um, so that's like 260 um, between the sights and the light. And then let's just say your trigger drops 100 bucks. There's 360. Let's just put that up to 400 bucks. 600 bucks for the firearm. Magwell is 90 bucks, and then um, you get three magazines out of the box with it, um, which I really like. And you pretty much got a full-on ready-to-go gun. Other, the last thing is the stippling. Uh, for this exact package, I'd have to look and see what I paid for it, uh, but it was less than 300 bucks. So, you know, for about 1,200 bucks, you can have a do-it-all gun. The trigger is fantastic. The sight picture is really, really nice. It's got um, a four for it. 4.01 inch barrel so right at four, four inches but just so that way nobody would i wouldn't get the glock people angry at me uh throughout the exact specification there um and uh you get an extremely reliable gun if i could only have one gun this would absolutely be it this one is um light enough to carry it comes with the flush fit magazines that fit perfectly in there um in the magwell however and you can still get you know these Terran tactical base pads to match your base plate if you choose to run that design and the gun looks amazing i really do like this this um this setup pretty much your rule of thumb is um other than trigger assembly you can pretty much do whatever you want to the lower um, and then up up here i would touch nothing so even though it's got a heavier trigger a lot of people like to change out the trigger springs but that's mainly how the trigger connection works in the glock if you're changing out the trigger spring here for the striker you're going to get a lot of light primer strikes even if you're firing really quality ammo um you'd have to find like some special striker and hand load your ammo yourself and be confident that you know what you're doing to the best of your ability to make sure every single bullet is exactly the same um or cartridge or whatever you want to call it so I would stay away from modding anything up here other than sights. I would not touch anything up here. Um, I just would not recommend it. I have done it and have really turned a really awesome gun into a dud. So with that being said, um, you know, a polish job it definitely really lightens up the trigger. I would love to get a trigger weight on this one. I think that this trigger, it, the I think it's, you know, probably about four and a quarter maybe maybe four and a half but it's like perfect for carry you can still use it um, if you want to have fun at the range um, with this enhanced texturing and these these uh, index point you can really get behind the gun get a high grip and force down on it um, another thing is glock has a really really as you can see here with that undercut it really lets me get high on the um on the physical beaver tail here so you can see it's barely covering you know as it goes forward it is barely missing the skin on the back of my hand now uh, if you get too high you will get some some bite there which sucks um, i have had that before but once you get a really good grip you'll kind of learn um, where you want to hold it another thing is that really really helps the recoil on this gun because it's such a light gun which is also why it's nice you know for like a, a, a one all gun you can carry it um you can use this in a self-defense scenario and you could use it to defend your home um and it's super reliable i mean it, it, it definitely could be a gun for everything under the sun um, obviously there's better options for like competition and stuff but then again if you have if this is all you have whatever for example um you know you're probably not going to be entering into any competitions however there are people that shoot um glocks in competition as well so they typically go a little bit further into modifications but nevertheless you still can do it um the bore axis really really lets um you get back on target quicker you do feel a little bit more recoil but being able to mitigate it by having that higher bore or uh, low bore axis with the high beaver tail that high grip um it's really tough to say i feel i can shoot this just as fast as 
um, you know, a lot of other guns with a lot more weight. So I don't know. It's, it's really a pleasure to shoot. It's got a lot of things going on for it. Uh, extremely reliable. Glock has a great track record, especially in the Gen 4, Gen 5 era. Um, I don't have any range footage of, of me shooting this. However, I do get some really, really good groups. I can, for the most part, shoot, you know, maybe, uh, you know, between 15 to 20 yards I can shoot with. And, you know, like if there was a six inch plate, it would be very easy for me to hit it repeatedly. Granted, as, as long as I'm not trying to rapid fire it, you know, at, you know, that far away. Um, but if I was able to, you know, shoot, reset, shoot, reset, shoot, reset, it wouldn't be an issue. So accuracy is really nice. And the Gen 5s all have the Marksman barrel, um, which I really like. Um, the trigger is very heavy from the factory. That is something I would change if you're going to be shooting far distance. However, if you're just looking at a gun to keep in the shelf, you know, for self-defense, I think this is a fantastic um, suggestion. It has a lot of reputation behind it. There's lots of people who have them, um, and they just all seem to work. I've had so many guns, and I will tell you by far, Glock has been my most reliable. Um, even with all the comments you get, you know, you'll get a lot of people that complain about the plastic guide rod. Those do go out, but that's after like, you know, 15,000 rounds. So a lot of people typically don't even shoot half of that in the course of five, six years. Um, so this is a, definitely an excellent firearm. I would recommend it um, and stay tuned for more videos. Next week, I wanna do something a little bit different. I wanna talk about holsters and fitment. So stay tuned um, and we will continue talking about other stuff. Um, also stay tuned in the next couple weeks. Uh, we're on our way to completing our 1500 um, round review for um, the Staccato. So stay in tune for that as well. And again, if you're a new uh, watcher, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll go from there. Thank you.